Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update. And a bushfire is still raging out of control in Malaga, very close to the Costa del Sol. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to the wall of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your names here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, a serious bushfire down there in Malaga in Spain south, still out of control. And nearly 3,000 people in six towns have been evacuated by the Sierra Bermeja fire. The Spanish Directorate General of Civil Protection and Emergencies has requested the Ministry of Defense to activate the Military Emergency Unit, the UME, to intervene in the forest fire in Sierra Bermeja. The activation of the UME involves the regional civil protection authorities and the ministries of the Interior and Defense, according to the Directorate General of Civil Protection on Twitter. The President of the Government, Pedro Sanchez, held a telephone conversation with the president of the Junta de Andalucía, Juanma Moreno. In it, they agreed on the deployment of the UME at the moment when the technical services in charge of the device considered it necessary. So a serious fire down there in Malaga, and as we saw, the UME, or the Military Emergency Unit, needing to be called in. I was reading another story about this fire this morning, and apparently experts are calling it a sixth generation fire, which is basically a fire which is impossible to put out. And another expert said that we had better get used to fires of this type because they are going to become more and more common in the future. So anybody in that part of Spain, near the Sierra Bermeja down there in Malaga, close to Estepona, take care and try to avoid the fire. Now the Spanish Postal Service, Correos, is looking for workers. They have around 3,400 jobs that they are looking to fill. And at the weekend, they held exams for these positions and some 150,000 people turned out for them. As we can see here, around 150,000 people are taking the exams throughout Spain to apply for one of the 3,381 posts in the Spanish Postal Service. Some 150,000 applicants will take the exams this Sunday to apply for one of the 3,381 permanent employment positions offered by Correos to carry out delivery functions in rural and urban areas and for logistical and customer service tasks throughout Spain. Almost half of the vacancies are concentrated in five provinces, Barcelona, which has the highest number, 698, Madrid 590, Valencia 232, Vizcaya 119, and Zaragoza 113. The tests are taking place simultaneously in 160 locations in 32 cities with vacancies in all provinces, specifically 2,356 vacancies for distribution tasks, 505 for sorting agents, and 520 for customer service in offices. So a huge amount of people sitting those exams for the postal service here in Spain, 150,000 people turning out for 3,381 permanent jobs. And it just goes to show how desperate some people are to get a permanent public service job in this country. Now last Saturday, the 9th of September, was the National Day of Catalonia. Thousands of people hit the streets in various cities in that part of Spain to show their support for Catalonia and to express their nationalism. But one man in Catalonia decided to risk his life and thought that it would be a good idea to walk around the city of Barcelona with the Spanish flag and a crucifix. As we can see here, a man walked around the center of Barcelona with the Spanish flag and a crucifix after the Diada. On the 11th of September, Catalonia celebrated its traditional diada. This year, the events in Barcelona were marked by incidents involving some groups of radicals in the final moments of the demonstration and by the division of pro-independence leaders. However, another image has been the star of the anecdote of the day of the diada 2021. It is of a man dressed entirely in black walking through the streets of Barcelona, specifically in the vicinity of the National Police Headquarters. He was also carrying a Spanish flag and a crucifix. He strolled through this part of the city while officers from the National Police and Mossos de Esquadra, Catalonian police, took down the fences put up during the Diada demonstration to prevent incidents. Despite questions about his identity and why he was wearing these symbols, the man did not stop and continued on his route. So a pretty risky thing to do, walk around the streets of Barcelona on the Diada day with a Spanish flag wrapped around your shoulders. But luckily, as we saw, he chose an area close to the National Police Station just in case. Now the fight between some parts of rural Spain and the banks is starting to heat up, and rural Galicia declares war on banks. 
outcry against branch closures. Demonstrations led by mayors, collection of signatures, a former councillor chained to an ATM, a mock wake presided over by the mayor. In recent weeks, mobilisations have been taking place in Galicia against the closure of bank branches in towns which are suffering the consequences of the mergers of some entities and the adjustments of others. The Shunta has reacted with an injection of 2.8 million euros to try to stop the disbandment, a measure that the opposition considers a gift in disguise and that, for the moment, has not stopped the protests. Its president, Alberto Núñez Feijó, appeals to the government, which he urges to design a plan to deal with the withdrawal that he attributes to the reconfiguration of the banking business. And on a similar topic, Spain's rural areas have the worst access to basic services in the EU. Rural areas in Spain have worse access to services compared to other European countries, according to a study by the Bank of Spain. Titled Access to Services in Rural Spain, the report analyzes the distance citizens need to travel to access basic services such as health clinics, nursery schools, supermarkets, hospitals, sports centers, and libraries. It concludes that, while in urban areas, a person has to travel on average a similar or even slightly shorter distance than in other European countries, in rural areas the distance is somewhat greater, especially when it comes to local rather than regional services such as primary health care or supermarkets. In rural areas of Castilla-La Mancha, Aragon and Castilla y León, citizens are on average more than 25 kilometers away from such local service. According to the analysis, this deficit could be explained in part by the terrain. So bank branches closing in Galicia, leading the government there to call for a war on banks. And in other rural parts of the country, for example in the two Castillas, some of the worst access to basic services in the EU. So things not looking good in some of the more remote parts of the country. Now when it comes to the vaccination campaign here in Spain, unfortunately things are starting to slow down. And this has led to 7 million vaccines that are about to expire sitting in fridges around the country. Nearly 7 million vaccines are waiting in Spanish refrigerators to be inoculated. A wait with an expiry date. Vials against SARS-CoV-2 last for six months, as long as they comply with the appropriate refrigeration conditions. In the case of Pfizer, in deep freezers, at between minus 90 degrees Celsius and minus 60 degrees Celsius. In Spain, 78% of the population has already received at least one dose and 73% have received two doses. So there are fewer and fewer arms available, but vaccines are still arriving. In fact, according to health data, another 16 million more should be received in September to complete the 93 million doses acquired in the first three quarters of the year. This is more than enough to immunize the entire Spanish population, although for now, only those over 12 years of age are being vaccinated. So 7 million vaccines sitting unused in fridges around the country, and maybe it's time to start thinking about sending those vaccines to other countries. I don't know, just a thought. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days now down to 131. There are still 4,975 people hospitalized around the country with COVID, and there are 1,227 COVID patients, unfortunately, still in ICU. Now the story of an international fugitive being captured in Spain the other day caught my attention and former Venezuelan intelligence chief El Pollo Carvajal has been arrested in Madrid. The Spanish police arrested Hugo Armando Carvajal, known as El Pollo Carvajal, a former Venezuelan Chavista general whose whereabouts have been unknown since November 2019 and who was wanted by the United States to be tried for drug trafficking, money laundering and collaboration with the FARC in Madrid on Thursday. Police sources have informed the EFE agency that Carvajal's arrest took place at around 9.15 p.m. in Torre Laguna Street in the capital by agents of Group 2 of the National Police Fugitives in collaboration with agents of the US DEA. So there we go, an interesting story about how a Venezuelan fugitive known as the Chicken, El Pollo, was arrested in Madrid. And he probably thought that because there are so many Venezuelans living in Madrid at the moment, he would just blend in. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from My Media, thanks Jude for your dedication. I had no idea it was so much work. You do a brilliant job. What do you reckon on Spain except in the e-vaccine passport thingy ScoMo's looking at doing? Hope the construction works in the background finish soon. Yeah, My Media, thanks for the comment. And as you can see, I'm doing this video today indoors because of the construction work that is taking place in one of my neighbor's backyards. 
very, very loud. Rain is also forecast for today, so I thought better to be safe than sorry and do the video inside. And when it comes to the e-vaccine passport thingy that you mentioned there, I think it's only a question of time before it is implemented here in Spain. I know Australia is talking about doing it. Other European countries are talking about doing it. Portugal has it in place, or at least they did when I was there recently. If you wanted to go to a restaurant at the weekends, you had to show a vaccine certificate. Here in Spain, it is currently not necessary to show a certificate if you want to eat out or stay in a hotel. There were some autonomous communities that tried to implement a certificate. Galicia, for example, tried to do it. And I think another couple also tried, but the idea was rejected by the high courts in those areas. And I think everybody out there knows my position on vaccines and vaccination. And when it comes to the COVID-19 passport, I don't have a problem. If it means that having one is the only way that I'm gonna be able to return to Australia anytime soon, then I'm for them. One here from Catherine, no one gets a third dose here in Canada. There are people in Africa who haven't even had one yet. I teach in a high school and everyone must wear masks still. Yeah, Catherine, thanks for the comment. And it's fairly similar to what's happening here in Spain at the moment. There's no talk of a third dose for the majority of the population. Only people that are immunocompromised have been told that they are going to get a third dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. And you're right, there are still a lot of people around the world that have not had access to even one COVID-19 dose yet. And unfortunately, as we know, until people in those countries get access to COVID-19 vaccines, we're gonna have a problem with this virus for a long time. We saw earlier in the video that Spain has 7 million doses sitting around in fridges not being used, so why not send those doses to countries in need? One here from Anikin, I hope the Spanish government learn from England and don't scrap masks yet. COVID rates increasing rapidly, nearly 1,000 deaths last week. Looking forward to being back in Spain, Alicante area, in two weeks, but sadly, I can only stay for one week. Yeah, and thanks for the comment, and as far as I know, there is no talk of the government scrapping the mask mandate anytime soon here in Spain. As we know, masks are necessary in all indoor public spaces here in Spain, sporting events also, basically anywhere there are crowds of people. It is the complete opposite of what is happening in England, where you don't have to wear a mask anywhere anymore, I believe. And it's amazing to see crowds at Premier League games sitting in stands with no social distancing and no masks. And good luck with your trip to Alicante, and I hope you get some of that good Mediterranean weather. One here from Dude, even before Brexit and COVID, the English bars were empty in some places in Spain. I know that the Spanish authorities are just doing their jobs, but I foresee many local landlords and residents alike going bankrupt in the not too distant future. Yeah, Dude, thanks for the comment, and to be honest, I'm not really sure about the situation of English bars here in Spain, because where I live here in Madrid, there are no English bars. Obviously, if you go to places like Mallorca, Benidorm, the Costa del Sol, the Canary Islands, you see the types of bars that you're referring to in the comment. But in the rest of the country, you very rarely see this type of establishment. And it must be pretty hard to own a business like this in Spain because there are so many bars and restaurants in this country and the local population, for whatever reason, don't seem to frequent this type of bar. So tough times ahead, I imagine, for English bar owners in Spain, unfortunately. One here from Richard, Olus Jew, just want to extend a big thank you for your hard work. I never knew it took so many hours per day to do these videos. It's like having a second job. Currently in week six of lockdown 6.0 here in Melbourne, so I am loving watching these videos. It makes me feel like part of me is back in Spain. Keep up the great work, mate. Yeah, Richard, thanks for the comment, and these videos do take up a fair bit of my time nowadays, almost like having a second job, and sometimes it's even like a first job. I learned the hard way after the 2008 financial crisis that it's not a good idea to have all of your eggs in the same basket. So these YouTube videos are only one of two or three things that I dedicate my time to, so glad that you like to watch them. And when it comes to what's going on down there in Australia, especially in Victoria and New South Wales, Things seem to be a little bit out of control at the moment. Politicians seem to be running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And as you said there, week six of lockdown 6.0. The good news for my family living in Western Australia and the bad news for Victorians is that the AFL Grand Final is going to be held in Perth in a couple of weeks time. So hopefully things down there in your neck of the woods start to get better soon because I imagine it's starting to take its toll on a lot of people. And finally, one here from Fanjan, I like the vocational training. Society gets benefit from the work they do. Young people get experience. Now, just add to this training period, business skills. Yeah, Fanjan, thanks for the comment, and obviously related to the huge vocational training plan that the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced the other day, something like 5.5 billion euros, I think it was, is going to be dedicated to 
this vocational training plan. And the idea, of course, is to give young people the skills they need to get a job. I think we saw the other day that youth unemployment in some parts of the country is around 38% at the moment. And Spain is the country in the EU with the most amount of knee knees young people that neither study nor work. So something has to be done, and let's hope that this new policy fixes some of those problems. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.